Hello everyone and welcome to this blended tutorial video and in this video we're going to be modeling a monitor in Blender 2.82 with either the Eevee or Cycles engine. So let's, let's get started. First, delete your default cube, numpad1 and add in a reference image. After you've added in your reference image go ahead and do shift a mesh cube. Enable transparency. After you've enabled transparency, scale down your cube on the z-axis and then scale it down on the y-axis to about a 0.2. Then I'm going to scale mine down along with the z-axis some more till it's about there. Then move it down. It does not have to align with the base image which will as always be in the description. Next, press tab and enable transparency. Then do control R and click. Control B after that and move it out about that much or as much as you think is right. Then select these top vertices and press E to move it up. Press E to extrude sorry, and move it up. After you've done that press E again and then right click. Then scale it up until it's about the right size. And then S and X, press E, S and X again I'm going to because I'm going to be adding in this little curve here. After you've done that scale it up. And again, I'm going to be doing this little tiny um, extra bit of detail here, like so. Okay, so after you've done that, you should have a shape, something like this, which is obviously not really what you want. <laughs> so after you've done that, select these top vertices here and scale them in along the y-axis, like this. There you go. Oops. Okay, until it's about, that's the right size, which for me is probably about, shall we say this much, probably a little bit more on the whole thing. There we go. Next, go enable transparency again and press Control R and align it with the monitor like edges. And let's align it like this until you have this. Then go into face select mode by pressing 3. Select, disable transparency and select its front face. Then press E and move it inwards. And there you go. Okay, now we have our monitor. You can delete the base image. Next, um, go ahead and go to the material tab and press new. And then press the plus key and do new again. Call this one screen. Next, press tab and assign this material here along with the outs. Actually, do not assign the out edges, just the actual screen. Then do assign. Now do plus and call this screen edge and assign this to here like uh, so. This will then be assigned to the stand and stuff. After you've done this go ahead and open up a new window and go to shader editor. Then delete the principal BDSF, go to screen and delete the pre-DSF shader. Principal BDSF shader. Shader and do add shader and shader mix shader. Do shader, uh, plug your add shader into your mix shader and I do shader specular, plug it into there. Change the specular, I uh, change the base color for the specular down to about a 0.4. Then add in a glossy BDSF and change it to sharp and using the eyedropper tool select the base color for specular. Put the roughness down to uh, up to a 0.6, like so, and then you should have something that looks a bit like this. But if I add in a light and sun, and then do this, okay, now you can see we have a nice monetary looking screen. After you've done this, I think uh, what I did wrong was put the roughness on your glossy shader down maybe a tiny, tiny bit. And then after you've done this, go ahead and do shader, glass shader, and plug it into there. Change the roughness for this to a 0.3. Put the FAC value down so that it favours the... Sorry, first select the base colour for that, and then put this down so that it favours the this side a bit more. The way you'll know this is simply like this. So this is favouring glass, this is favouring reflection. So I think just do the one that looks best, which is probably the darker one. So now you can see we have this. If you want to go into the cycles engine, then you can do, and you can then make it look even nicer, as I will demonstrate. 
It will look weird in the cycle dungeon because this is not actually a node. So let's replace this with a glossy shader that's also, but set it to GGX instead. Leave the roughness for that on 0 .0, uh, 0 0.2. Okay, next shader and add in a mix shader. Set it so that it's 0 0.1. Then add in a mission shader. Plug it into that. Set the color to gray. You can change the strength to whatever you want, but you'll see it will have a very slight bit of glow to it. I want to use the EV engine for this tutorial. You can enable bloom on the EV engine if you want to, and you'll see it will do stuff after a while. You can set the color by doing a color and mix RGB. I'm plugging that into here. And then setting both of the colors down a lot and you can then up the strength quite a bit but you do need to be very very bright before it starts having bloom so i'm not going to do that okay so we have now got our monitor screen next select the edge and set it to glossy that's it just leave it on glossy and put the rough the color down to almost black Set the roughness to 0 0.2. That's all. And you see now we have the silver edge. Next, select the this material for the everything else. And go ahead and put the clear coat on full as well as the clear coat roughness. The specular on full and the roughness on full. You can now see that doesn't do a whole lot. But it does draw your attention slightly away from it. Okay. You can make your own colours with that if you want to. It depends on if you want it to or not, but I like it like this because it gives it a sort of subdivided sort of look. So next, go ahead and add in a subdivision surface modifier. Press tab and move this. Oops, move this to the full on both sides, like so. Simply click on like this to tighten it up accordingly. You can do it however you want. However, I'm going to be doing it. Like this. These are loop cuts, by the way. Okay. And now you can see we have a sort of a subdivided looking monitor. I do, however, need to do this. There we go. You can see now the edges are a little bit smoother. If we set this onto something like three, you can see you can. there is quite a big difference. I'm going to set the render to four and the viewport to two. And then I'm going to go back into solid view and add in a table. Shift A, mesh cube, scale it down till it's about a zero point. Scale it down a lot, like this much, maybe even more. Then press numpad 1, tab, and enable transparency and go back into vertice select mode. Move it, uh, sorry, press numpad 7, then numpad 9 to go into the bottom orthographic mode. Then press control R and t press control R to loop cut and then control b and do 0.7 on your keyboard or however much you want then control b again add, uh, adding a horizontal um loop cut and do 0.7 again then go back into face select mode and select the faces you just made then proceed to extrude them out and there we go i am going to very quickly grab the top texture the top part of the table like this i'm then going to go ahead oopsie um i'm going to go ahead and assign this a texture so new and i'm going to call this table and do assign oh wait sorry table top and assign next what i'm going to do is with this i'm going to press select and i'm going to um actually deselect these top things here so select this and then grab these here like this and assign next select the chair legs and in a loop cut like that first change this thing up here to individual origins then select the table legs and do s shift z so that they are about this size okay now move your table down and scale it up accordingly until it's about the size you want after you've done that 
go into your camera with numpad zero and position it to how you would like. Okay. Now make the texture for your table. Open up a new window, go to shader editor, tabletop. Now delete the principal BDSF node and do shader and add shader. Add in a glass, change this one to multi scatter GGX and another glass which you want to set on GGX. Plug these two both into the add shader and then into surface. Next, enable screen space refraction in here as well as screen space reflections and refraction in your render settings. After you've done that, you should notice that we have a pretty cool looking glass. You can increase or decrease the roughness, which is what I'm going to put the roughness for the multi scatter on 0 0.7 and this on about a point. Actually, these glass table tables are normally more or less transparent, so I'm going to just put this bottom one on a 0 0.3. Next, to grab your table legs and um, very simply change the metallic to full, the roughness to um, about 0.7, and the specular to full, and there you go. And so we want a sort of metallic legs, maybe slight. Yeah, I'm going to say about that. So we have a sort of metallic table leg. I'm going to change the base color down a tiny bit. Like so. Actually, I'm going to change this up a bit, I think. There you go. Okay. Now you can subdivide your table if you wanted to. I haven't tried this. At least with this particular table. Well, it's kind of obvious since I literally just made it. So I'm going to tighten this up. I don't know if this looks any better or any worse. It seems to freak out the glass a bit, so I think I'll have it off. Okay, so next I'm going to add in the background. The background is simply going to be a plane by you press, press R and X and change it to 90. Then scale it up until it fits the whole camera view. Like so. Then go ahead and make a new material for it. Open up a new window, and you guessed it, go to Shader Editor. Delete the principal BDSF and do Shader, uh, Mix Shader. Shader, Diffuse. Shader, and you want a, um, where is it? Uh, yeah, Shader, and then, uh, sorry, uh, uh, no. Actually, yeah, you just want a diffuse shader and a mix shader. Put the diffuse into here and then go ahead and. Oh no, it's a specular that was in. And then plug the specular into the bottom. Change the roughness to full and the clear coat to roughness 0 0.3 and the clear coat to there. Then add in AO with input, shift A, input, ambient occlusion. Plug the AO into the AO socket. And now close this window. Next, if we were to move this outwards so that it actually fits the table and move the camera, you can see we have a sort of nice shadow and a nice reflection. Next, because I don't think the table like feet actually have a face, yeah, they don't have a top face. So I'm going to fix that by very simply going to numpad 7, selecting these like so. Oops. Wait, is there already a face there? Oh no, wait. It's very hard to tell. I have to like go inside the table for this. Okay, so Alt Shift, so select all these vertices here. I'm gonna have to enable transparency and like select it like this. And then press F or E and then S and move this inwards to like zero. Just zero like that, and then hopefully that will fix error. Yes, it does. Okay, so next I'm going to do the same on the opposite leg. So select all of these and pressing F, K, yeah, E, S, zero, and then I'm going to add in a loop cut down the middle. I already have. So I'm going to delete. And add in a mirror modifier. Change the mirror to y-axis, depending on the orientation of your scene, and then hit apply. 
now you can see that the texture or fix is applied throughout. Okay, now you've done this, grab your wall and actually I have a better idea. Rather than having it with this, go ahead and add re-add in the principal BDSF shader. Then do texture, brick texture. Plug that into the base color. Next, subdivide it a few times and do numpad 0 and numpad 1 to go into an orthographic view. Then press U and project from view bounds. That will UV unwrap it. Next, you can plug the principled BDSF into surface and we have a wall texture. This highlights uh, scenes quite well. Feel free to change or increase or decrease the specular or the metallic. I like having the metallic for this on high because I think it likes it look nice. And you can increase or decrease the mortar or color for this. And a quick thing I found is go to texture, noise texture, and then converter color ramp. Then what you can do is you can plug the FAC into the FAC and that into there. And quickly adjust the noise amount in the mortar. Like so. Next, change it to color. Uh, plug the color into the mortar now, I think. Okay, then do converter separate RGB. Okay, so now you can see if we were to change the color of this to like a brick text, a brick color. Like so, we should have some noise here, as you can see. Now I'm going to increase the detail and increase the distortion as well as going ahead and adding in a UV node. After doing this, I'm going to go ahead and add in a converter color ramp. Now I can control the amount of noise and the type of noise. So I'm going to have the noise sort of like this. So maybe a little bit more or less. Sort of something like this ought to look nice. Okay, now that you have your wall, Go ahead and do Shift A Mesh Plane and set this as your floor. Scale up your bricks so that it fits inside the camera scene or, or just your camera if it doesn't already fit. I want to have my scene looking something like this. So I'm going to have my light source sort of, sort of like I think here and here and here and here. But before I do that, I am going to go into here and decrease the power of this to about 500. Or even lower maybe, about 100. Then go enable contact shadows. Then open up a new window. I don't know if this works in the EV engine. It does not, okay. Okay, so if you wanted a lamp on scene, there is a really simple way of making a lamp very quickly. Shift A, Mesh, Taurus. S. Shift and Z. Move it in until it looks something like this. Then move it in. Actually, I'm going to say S, Shift and X now. Or S and Z. Until. Okay, there we go. Now go ahead and sel ring select by holding Alt and selecting. Move this inwards to uh, 0. Press. Uh, not 0, sorry. Press E and then S and move this in. Then press uh, F and then E, and it will automatically go down. You can make a really, really simple light like this. As you can see, it doesn't have to be a desk light necessarily, but if you want it to be a desk light, scale it in until it looks something like this. You also probably want it to have, press E and then S and then E again, and then it will look something like this. Next, you want to press G and Z, G and X, or G and Y, sorry, just to get it positioned properly. Okay, next, add in a subdivision surface. Uh, tighten up your mesh accordingly. Set the viewport display to however you want, however high or however low you want it to be. After you've done that, simply select the top part of your mesh by going into transparency mode and selecting it. 
then hit assign and change this to emission. After you've done that, change the color to uh, change the yeah change the color to converter black body, and the temperature to about a two thousand four hundred. Put the strength on about three. Now you can see we have a light and a lamp on screen straight away. I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave it like this. You can. I'm also going to decrease the power of the sun. That's an awesome. Um, quote. Okay, now you can see we have a nice um, scene. I'm going to very quickly adjust this so that there's a slight reflection, and there we go. Okay, after you've done this, go ahead and render it out. If you're using cycles, it looks something like this. I'm going to very quickly do this. If you were on cycles, it would look something like this, but I suppose you would adjust it accordingly. Next, render image. It should only take a couple of seconds. Yep, I didn't cut there, by the way. So, as you can see, we have a pretty nice looking scene. There's the light sources. There's the monitor. There's a nice looking glass. And there's the floor. So, after you've done this, just image and save as. If you are, however, using cycles, or not even necessarily using cycles, go into your compulsing tab and use nodes. Then go ahead and do filter denoise. Turn off HDR. If you're using a low sample count on EV, like even if you're using one on EV, I'll just disable this quickly. Then they usually, I mean, there almost never is actually any fireflies, which are these white dots. But if there is, then this, I'll show you the difference of what this does. You can see it's compositing, yeah, done, and there's hardly any lost quality. But for EV, it takes like a couple seconds for 128 samples, so. But if you wanted to use cycles, however, and I'll set my render, render to 64, then render this image. It might take a bit of time. I will uh, just cut. Okay, my scene has finished rendering. So this was 64 samples. This took 1 minute and 7 seconds. But my CPU is a Ryzen 7 1800X, which is quite a fast comp uh, CPU. Well, uh, I know that most people with Blender, are, uh, most like professional Blender users probably have like <laughs> the new Threadripper, with, which has like 64 cores. Anyway. I could have used GPU computer and it probably would have been about 30 seconds, maybe 40. But as it was, because uh, you might not have a powerful enough CPU, a GPU to do that, because it might just get in the way of your CPU. But anyway, this is without the denoise node, and this is with the denoise node. You can see the difference, yeah, and hardly any lost quality. Because the glass is designed for EV, it will look weird on here. But this is what this would look like on cycles. Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. And this is probably the first day I've got two videos out in a, in um in the day. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, if you want to see some more videos, comment in the comment section. I don't know where else you're gonna comment, but uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the um in the next video. Bye. P.S. If you're still watching, I am going to get a new microphone soon, hopefully. So that should be good. And hopefully it won't sound as bad as this one. Because I have to use something called voice uh, meter for this, which is annoying. But, um... Hopefully I'm going to get a new microphone, which will not pick up my keyboard as much. So yeah. Anyway, for real, goodbye.